Can you tell us about the State Security Commission meeting? Yeah, so the State Security Commission meeting was held today. And we had a very uh, in-depth discussion uh, pertaining to few issues. And uh, uh, though there are a number of issues which were uh, taken up in the agenda, but most importantly, few uh, issues which uh, revolves around uh, improving the efficiency of the whole police organization vis-a-vis -vis the mandate of the law uh, to all the uh, authorities under the organization, vis-a-vis uh, -vis their responsibility towards better policing, ensuring peace and tranquility, keeping in mind the unfolding challenges uh, with uh, instances of rising crimes, which can culminate into, you know, uh, f bigger organized crime, you know. So these issues have been discussed and to how to how to how to create a deterrence by utilizing the resources available with the organization in other words to also see that uh, the police organization uh, utilizes the resources within the command of the organization optimally uh, to achieve that direction which is uh, designed by the law itself to fulfill the mandate of the law because Meghalaya State Police Act 2010 is quite exhaustive uh, quite uh, directional and therefore uh, the mandate of the law, uh, giving the delegation of power to the DZP, to the SP, all these things are all uh, well indicated and well defined. So how to uh, ensure that uh, all this uh, uh, intent of uh, increasing the efficiency of policing, keeping in mind all the challenges and other uh, uh, you know, obstacles around, uh, how they can, they can ensure that. Uh, and there are many obstacles, there are many instances where uh, uh, organizations also get uh, influenced, you know, by external forces, including political, social, or even other forces, you know. Uh, maybe even the uh, uh, people who uh, organize a kind of uh, organized groups, a cartel, all these things, are, these are nothing new. Okay, you know what has happened over the years. Uh, if it has not happened here, uh, is there any, 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 any any reason for us to be apprehensive of similar kind of things happening here therefore what should be our uh, uh, proactive measures to ensure that uh, we don't see what we see elsewhere in 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 respect of all uh, deterioration of uh, uh, law and order or otherwise you know uh, the lawlessness and other other um, instances of organized crime etc etc uh, therefore many issues many factors actually trigger that many many factors also uh, create a situation wherein uh, this kind of organized crime start uh, becoming more and more pronounced and then uh, then you have a problem. So how to uh, prevent and also how to ensure deterrence. By no meeting then another important, another important thing that we have uh, discussed is also to, because we know, we have known over the years, it is uh, not something which is new. Uh, so, um, based on our uh, past experiences and knowledge which is based on the past experiences, uh, there are uh, important uh, areas of concern which also revolves around uh, trying to, trying to uh, take leverage upon uh, closeness or proximity with uh, uh, authorities in police department at the level of police stations, at the level of police outposts, and, and somehow create a situation where they'll end up abusing their power. For the case in hand, we are specific towards uh, such reports coming from the plain areas of West Garo Hills, Southwest Garo Hills, all these areas, you know. So <clears throat> there are instances where good, good officers who are posted in those uh, police stations, though uh, they have not been uh, uh, to that extent uh, defiled by that kind of uh, environment, do get uh, dragged into the same vicious cycle of all, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the uh, informed irregularities of uh, abuse of authorities and power. So this is something which needs to be corrected. And this uh, also uh, is, again, uh, by law, binding on the officer's concern. So the law provides both the mandate and responsibility for the DGP and for the SPs, and therefore, how in sync with the mandate and intent of the law, all these things can be enforced in such a way so that uh, police is found 
as a friend of the society and uh, is not is not influenced by partiality or uh, some kind of uh, organization which can be uh, subjected to manipulation by people who are in the vicious cycle of doing it in the past it has happened it is still continuing so there is a need to uh, put an end to this so this is something which has been discussed today and another thing is to ensure the 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 whole mapping of the resources including the including the resources in terms of the manpower because number of police stations and outposts uh, are actually running uh, with depleted number of manpower that means the total sanction strength of the respective police outposts and police stations and other establishments are running at uh, almost at 60% uh, capacity 50% capacity and uh, these are not good because when you are when you are uh, uh, approving an according sanction uh, in terms of the uh, manpower strength for any police station or police uh, establishment anywhere in the state you are you are taking into uh, cognizance all other aspects you know uh, the, the the need to protect any 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 police station or police establishment uh, existing across the state can be a potential uh, target of attack by any other inimical forces. You have seen it uh, in Jain you have seen it even in Shillong. So if these things can happen in national uh, state capital, then you have to be uh, obviously uh, aware of the possibilities of similar kind of adventurism by any any uh, groups of uh, criminals and therefore uh, ensure ensure that the police uh, establishment across the states are not seen as vulnerable rather they should be seen as imposing as powerful so that they create a sense of deterrence so these things are important and therefore the recruitment comes the uh, issue of leaving the vacancies for a long long time is not a good thing because all these uh, posts which have been sanctioned and the resultant vacancy because of retirement, because of promotion, whatever has happened. Uh, but then the fact is that the whole sanctioned post is designed uh, to, to meet the demand of each police establishment, whether it is police outpost, it is police station, whether it is any other uh, establishment like police infiltration check post, point, or whether it is the, uh, the office of the SP. So, they are, every single post that has been sanctioned is determined by the uh, justification of the actual requirement. Mm -hmm. So any depletion of the forces uh, in terms of the manpower uh, should be uh, promptly taken uh, cognizance of and should be done good by, uh, you know, filling up the post. Therefore, recruitment must be regular. Recruitment must be regular. I'm not talking about new sanctions of post, but I'm talking about the vacancies which exist and every vacancy, there must be recruitment every year because you cannot wait. The overall cumulative number of vacancies, if you allow it to uh, get accumulated over a period of time, then you will have a problem. Not only a problem, you also deprive who are willing to serve the state, who are willing to serve the people by being uh, a m member of the police organization. Allow them this privilege. Why you uh, ask him to wait for three, four, five years? So I think these are uh, something which uh, goes beyond our intent of ensuring that the every police establishment across the state uh, are with uh, full capacity in terms of their um, uh, you know, manpower strength. And at the same time also, to ensure that all the vacancies that uh, takes place over the years are promptly filled up so that youth get privilege of being able to join with uh, the government in serving the people. Coming so the repository of state power, you know, how you share this power by allowing people to be part of the uh, whole government institutions uh, by uh, being an employee in the government organization. So allow these privileges to the youth. So coming to one serious point, that <coughs> means criminal police nexus exists in Meghalaya. If you are looking at what I'm saying is that it need to be looked at seriously uh, from the perspective of how there are forces, there are forces who tend to influence the people who are posted in different areas across the state, particularly in the uh, western part of the state, where police establishments are being used to settle their personal scores. 
police establishments are also the authorities who are posted in these police establishments are being abused to you know to create some kind of uh, uh, system where uh, people uh, uh, suppress and oppress uh, people who don't belong to their particular uh, you know in different way even sometimes politically also. even sometimes politically also. but this trend is wrong because uh, in our given democracy political parties will come and go sometimes some political parties will be in power subsequently some other political power may be in the power but what uh, is required to be avoided is because this trend if allowed to uh, continue then the perception of the people uh, will be such that okay we can we can we can manipulate and we can misuse this power if we are in the government let us put an end to that uh, thoughts and ideas another issue why this why the meeting was not held for last 5 years come again why the meeting similar meetings were not held for the last 5 years no no i have taken cognizance of i mean i have i have uh, uh, flagged this issue and then the commission has taken cognizance of this requirement because the law the law is very clear uh, it is the uh, rather it is binding on the part of the government to have this state security commission meeting every 3 months okay so today we have discussed this and then it has been agreed that this meeting will from now on be held every three months. So I just want to reconfirm again, that means you are uh, 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 confirming that political interference is there in our police force? Yes, it is there. That's the reason why I'm, I have flagged this issue. Now, see, this may be in small scale, but for common men, for helpless people, these are not small things. These are big things. You know, therefore, therefore, uh, police organizations should not be weaponized by anybody uh, to allow them to, you know, create that kind of sense of fear uh, to people who are in authority by virtue of being affiliated to any political party which is in power. This is not something which is good for the future because then it will only be a vicious cycle. Uh, you do it today. I will do it tomorrow. You know, that's uh, perception will come. And when you want to stop it, they will say, oh, my leader is good for nothing. He's not allowing me to do the same. You know? So, therefore, uh, let us uh, ensure that uh, the whole policing uh, aspect is not to any extent diluted by other uh, areas of uh, interest, which, is, uh, which revolves around individual interest of settling personal score or uh, creating some kind of uh, uh, perception to show that he wills power because of being where he is, you know. So these are things uh, uh, which uh, can be put an end to because the law itself is also indicative of this. In fact, if you go through the Meghalaya Police Act 2010, you will see that these points are also precisely indicated in the points of concern and how we must ensure that the whole organization is insulated from the tendency of uh, anybody misusing or anybody getting influence, uh, political or otherwise. It is not only political always. It can be you know, other inducement by other group of people. It may be businessmen or it may be uh, somebody who is in a cartel, you know, cartel of smuggling, cartel of... Uh, today, you have a serious problem confronting us. The problem of easy availability of substance of abuse. Where are they coming from? You have to uh, somehow be investigated to find out. Is there any who is facilitating this uh, from people who otherwise should be the uh, uh, people concerned, mandated by law to create a deterrence? Rather than creating a deterrence, is he becoming a facilitator? All these things, you know, because if you go by uh, how this type of cartel have operated elsewhere in the world and how they have successfully been able to influence you know the authorities therefore it gives you reason to uh, you know be vigilant okay this is what has been uh, this is what has happened elsewhere is it that these similar models of is being operate, uh, operated by uh, our people also so it gives you a reason to be vigilant keeping in mind the quantum of illegalities happening in the state. Is it not a fact? This substance abuse is a problem. 
a matter of serious concern for the people. You have seen recently uh, uh, Minister in Charge Urban Affairs, uh, Minister in Charge Tourism, having a special program on uh, making West Shillong constituency drug free. He had a program, special program organized. Why? Because of the magnitude of the problem. Therefore, you have every reason to be vigilant and more and more vigilant and utilize all the resources available under your command to take these problems head on. And therefore, when you're talking about taking these issues, these uh, uh, all illegalities head on, that means you will definitely be confronted by certain situation. If the availability of drugs are all across the state, that means there are some cartel operatives. Because whenever you see uh, any instance of uh, the authorities seizing drugs or seizing substance uh, of abuse, what is uh, the, the, the information that we are given? Sometimes drugs worth of 5 crore, drugs worth of 40 crore, 30 crore, 100 crore, 200 crore. Recently, Delhi, you have seen how many thousands crore? That means these are not being done by people who have uh, lack of resources. That means these are crimes which are uh, obviously facilitated by people who have deep pockets, who have such resources. Therefore, you cannot rule out, you cannot rule out uh, similar kind of cartels which have operated elsewhere in the world to slowly try to establish in this part of the country, keeping in mind the vulnerability of Northeast and keeping in mind the borders with the neighboring countries which we share from geopolitical angle.